2016 has finally come to an end. This year was my first year using Goodreads and I made a load of shelves so I could look back and do all the statistics -y stuff. And so I'm gonna do that. Also Goodreads has like statistics anyway and I find it interesting to look at the stats and facts about the books that I've read. So let's look at the books that I read this year. In total I read 51 books according to Goodreads and that equates to 12,745 pages. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of pages. How many words is that? I'm interested in how many words that is. The shortest book I read was Polinia by China Mayville. Polinia is it's 16 pages. <laughs> it's tiny. And the longest book I read was apparently, I didn't realise it was this long when I was reading it, but it is Catching Fire, which is 480 pages. I don't recall it being that long, but Cool, that was my longest book. Apparently, according to Goodreads, the most popular book I read this year, in terms of how many other people read it, was Hunger Games, which I'm not surprised <laughs> by. I finally delved into Hunger Games and yeah, of course that's most popular. <laughs> and the least popular book in terms of how many people had said they'd read it was Solid Geometry by Ian McEwan, which again is another very, very short story. Apparently only 40 people have read that book on Goodreads, <laughs> compared to how many people have read The Hunger Games, which is 4,779,527 people. Wow. <laughs> okay, and now to look at the shelves that I made. So the shelves I made was male authors, female authors, books for uni, rereads, LGBT characters, and don't physically own, and autobiographies and biographies. Out of the 51 books I read, four of them were rereads, and those included the whole of the Lucifer Box series, so The Vesuvius Club, The Devil in Amber, and Black Butterfly, and also Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And I said when I finished rereading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone that I wanted to carry on and read the rest, but I haven't. But I do still want to reread, because it has been a very, 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 very long time since I reread Harry Potter. Of the 51 books I read, nine of them I didn't physically own. Oh, but interestingly, Two of the books on this list that I didn't physically own when I read them, I now do own. And those two are The Shawl by Cynthia Ozick and The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I own those two books now, but when I read them I did not. And that is because my university uploaded them for us, because they're only short. And that is the case as well for Solid Geometry and Polemia. All four of those books were university books and because they were so short, the university just uploaded them for us. The other five books I do not own myself, three of them were university books, and those were three early modern utopias, which included Utopia by Thomas More, Two Atlantis by Francis Bacon, and The Isle of Pines by Henry Neville, all combined in one book, and I did read all of those. Again, that was available online thanks to the university. So the two university books I didn't read, I checked out of the library, and that was Swastika Night, which I didn't by myself because it said on the reading list it was available online but I just wanted a physical book so I checked it out at the library and A New View of Society by Robert Owen. I didn't purchase this one because I was like I don't want a book of essays. <laughs> you know my bookcase is very much novels and I was like I don't want essays. And the other two books that I did not own were Cinder and The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Cinder came from the library, I haven't carried on that series yet, I do want to, and The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. I picked it up off of my dad's bookshelf because I was bored, like <laughs> the internet wasn't working, the telly was boring, so I just had a scan of his bookcase and picked it up and it took me a few hours to read. <laughs> And the book I showed in the video where I was wrapping it up is actually not my dad's version, it's my mum's version because they both own it. <laughs> of the 51 books I read, only 23 are university books. I'm surprised at that. In order of when I read them, the university books I read this year were Posh, which is actually a play, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, The Shawl, The Yellow Wallpaper, Solid Geometry, Interpreter of Maladies, Breakfast on Pluto, Polinia, and that was the second half of first year, and then these next books are the first half of second year, <laughs> and they include Somebody's Husband, Somebody's Son, Blow Your House Down, Three Early Modern Utopias, A New View of Society, Looking Backward, The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas, A Modern Utopia, As If, News from Nowhere, Boyer, Border Crossing, Swastika Night, 
1984, A Clockwork Orange, and Fahrenheit 451. I have read more books by males. I have read 31 books by male authors and 22 by female authors. But interestingly, all the way throughout the year it was pretty even until we got to starting second year of university because oh my god this year's reading list there was like no female writers i took utopias and dystopias and there was not a single female utopia writer and one female dystopian writer but that book was originally published under a male's name so yeah starting university again completely mucked up my evenness of reading males and females. A grand total of five of the 51 books I read were autobiographies slash biographies and a couple of those I know they're not technically autobiographies or biographies. Those questionable ones include As If, because like they're real life stories but they're not breakdowns of a person's life. The five books I put on the shelf are As If by Blake Morrison, Somebody's Husband, Somebody's Son by Gordon Byrne which is about Peter Sutcliffe. Oh, and As If is about, well, Blake Morrison himself, but the James Bulger case. There's also All I Know Now by Carrie Ho Fletcher, The Amazing Book Is Not On Fire by Dan and Phil, and also Confessions of a Conjurer by Darren Brown. And the final shelf I have is LGBT characters, and there is a grand total of 13. Oh, interesting. The first book on the list, because it's the last book I read, is Swastika Night. It's kind of questionable if they are homosexuals because they don't know anything else. We discussed this in class actually and I'd already put it on that shelf before we had this discussion and I realised, oh, maybe they're not gay. Because basically in the universe that Burdekin has created, women are not there for anything else but to reproduce. You can't have a relationship with them. So all these men have grown up knowing nothing of being able to have a relationship with a woman. They only simply use them as like a vessel to create a baby. So the men have relationships with like other men, but that's all that's possible really in this universe. So is it really gay? Because we were discussing like homosexuality is the opposite of heterosexuality, but in a universe where heterosexuality isn't possible, can you be gay? Interesting. But anyway, that's on the shelf. It's questionable whether it should be on that shelf, but anyway. The other books on there are Border Crossing and Blow Your House Down, both by Pat Barker. I found in Pat Barker's books, she always has like a queer side character person. I've only read two of her books, but in both of them she had just like a character that was also like, oh yeah, also, you're gay. In Border Crossing it was a gay man, in Blow Your House Down it was a gay woman. Good. <laughs> also on the list is Agatha Reason and the Walkers of Dembley. There's a lesbian. On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher. There is a bisexual man. Then we've got the whole of the Lucifer Box novel, because Lucifer Box is a bisexual man. Uh, Breakfast on Pluto, a trans character. Every Day by David Leverthon. There is also one character that A inhabits that is a gay man. Posh, gay man. Danish girl, trans woman. And conf I put Confessions of a Conjurer on here because Darren Brown himself is gay, but I was like, it's not a gay character. He is a gay man but it is a book about himself so it kind of deserves to go in that list i don't know so yeah that's a rundown of statistics of all the books i read this year thanks for watching please like and subscribe and all that stuff and i'll see you guys later bye <laughs>